Hey guys, Anthony 4 before Diesel. This one is diff breathers. Do you need diff breathers? Which diff breathers should you get? How should you install your diff breathers? Okay, lots of people are asking about diff breathers. Now traditionally, lots of people have used and installed aftermarket diff breather setups. Um, first thing I'd like to say is generally I don't use any extended diff breathers. I'll tell you what I've got. If you've got a Prado and you're using it mainly for touring and a few river crossings, you don't need to have aftermarket or extended diff breathers. Basically, to put it simple, um, the standard system that's there works and we know that because We've used them for years in many, many river crossings. Never had any water in any of our diffs or transmission or anything else. Um, and of course, all the vehicles we work on where we change those diff oils, we don't see water in those either. And I've mentioned it before, we've talked about it before. So I will say there's one car that I can think of that had a lot in there. I don't know what's going on there, but that's just bizarre. I wouldn't say it's because it didn't have diff breathers, but putting a diff breather on it may have stopped that. Now what happened with that? Nothing, you know, there was a heap of water in there, it was sitting on top of the oil because the oil's heavier and we drained it out at the service and put new oil in and the oil kept lubricating the diff, same as the old oil did because the water's sitting on top generally. Um, that's what we had with that one anyway, that's what happened in that situation. Never seen a problem with a Toyota diff um, from water water you know water in the oil so my point is if a little bit of water got in there it's not really going to matter that much anyway you know it is important to change your oil every regular intervals and every 20,000 k's that'd be helpful um, now diff breathers so basically I suppose I've already just said in my opinion you don't really need them now it all depends what you're doing and if everything's working right more importantly what you need is you need to make sure that those little breathers that are on there because the diffs do have a breather standard, okay? So don't think you're adding something on that it doesn't have, because you're not. You're just modifying it. It's a bit like the snorkel trying to turn the car into a boat, you know? I mean, a bit of excitement. Oh, it's a river crossing. <laughs> Let's all get a bit excited because we're driving through some water, yeah? You know, I get it. The first time you go through a bit of water and it doesn't really have to be that deep the first time. And then, you know, like everything, it gets a bit disinteresting and you know it needs to be deep oh that's a nice river oh that's a good one. Oh, that was a good one wasn't it you know and then you start feeling the water lapping under the floor and all that sort of thing and well that's deep and sometimes you think it's deep when it's not that deep and then you've got the other end of the situation where people didn't know how deep it was and they didn't realize that cars are kind of like boats and they float pretty well so and they get washed away pretty well also and once you get washed away into the deeper water then you know it just gets a bit inconvenient really more than anything um, can be a little bit costly I suppose it's only your insurance excess unless it's found that you are uh, a bit ne negligent really you've got a you know duty of care to use your brain a little bit so and I think some insurances are changing that or making it really clear that's where there's a lot of confusion about water crossings and whether you're covered or not you know obviously if it's a gazetted track and it looks reasonable and you've checked it and all those sorts of things then I think you should be covered but perhaps some insurance that's another that's another story but so you get these diff breather kits and of course it all consists of aftermarket wires zip ties and some other little breathery things that you mount under your engine base somewhere to just start collecting more stuff up under there um, I don't use them the only thing that I've ever done is on the for example the 120 we've got um, I at one point was a bit over cautious I think I don't think it needed it the transmission is the most important um, component that you wouldn't want to get water into okay that's going to be the most sensitive component I'm not too worried about the diffs or the transfer case you're not going to get water in there if you do I'm not too worried transmission well it's been proven that you can get a bit of water in there and if you get it out and change your oil and that that you can save your transmission that's been proven um, but of course best avoided the breather for the transmission on most of these Prados like you know the 1kd engine again the most common the breathers are up behind the head so it goes on a clamp on the bell housing okay 
there's a little clamp there that holds the end of the diff breather so it's sitting at about the height of the head maybe the just above the the bottom of the head right now just remember that not just the height to take into account um, there's if you're in that depth of water for any amount of time you're probably in a bit of other trouble and you've got water coming in elsewhere in the car as well so you've got to think about that um, you're either floating or water, water's coming in if you've sealed it all up with silicon and tape and everything and you think you're watertight well you probably something you've forgotten and you're not but if you think you are you'd be floating and if you're not floating that's because water's coming in and it'll weigh you down and could cause some other problems so best to be cautious careful and avoid those situations um, but what I did was, I re no need for any aftermarket kits for a hundred bucks or whatever they are, you know. All I did, I actually used a piece of hose I had in the workshop, which was, um, I don't have no idea what size it was, but I used the joiner, which again, I think I had in the workshop to join from the standard hose. So I removed that breather out of the end of the hose, put the joiner in, extended another piece of hose from that joiner, left it through the clamp, up near the back of the head and I added corrugated split tubing just because I had it in the workshop and for a bit of extra protection in case there's any heat around there and I ran it up to the EGR side of things and just secured it up behind the EGR valve um, with a zip tie which is in a pretty cool position I may have shown you that in some other videos I'm not sure um, doesn't really matter the point is I don't think I need it but it brought it up a little bit and when you think about it, if you need it to be that high, if you're in that amount of water for any amount of time, look, we're talking, it's probably only two to 300 mil higher than what it was stock standard, if you like, if you know what I mean. So um, being up there behind the EGR valve intake, you know, it's only a little bit higher than the head, you know what I mean? So, but even at that level of the head, if you've got, so the vehicle usually is gonna be moving forward through the water hopefully it's nice clean water not a dirty bog hole and not salt water and that sort of thing I would advise against muddy dirty water and salt water fresh water clean rivers and stuff like that usually don't cause too many problems for anything they go pretty well um, so if you're in that depth of water higher than where that transmission breather is for any amount of time you're in a bit of trouble so it's kind of high enough is what I'm saying now it's got a little cap on it and if you go into the water nicely you don't dive into it with everything hot you let it cool down a little bit if you can or you think about that on your approach you know in the in the last five minutes to that river crossing and you try and you're coming down a hill usually stuff your brakes and just a bit of airflow and keep everything cool you can switch it off and wait a few minutes before you go through if you've got time because after all you should be there to relax and enjoy you know not just race through everything um, so if you do that and then when you go into the water if you go into it slowly then as the water makes contact with all those materials and it cools down and it sucks in well the breather's higher than the whole transmission for example so the whole transmission's got to be underwater before the breather is if you know what I mean so there's no more cooling to be done and what happens then it sucks that little hat that upside down hat down so a water doesn't get in down the line from above and it, it's kind of like sucked clothes as it's going in the water and then when you come out of course it's out of the presumably cold water and the transition material temperature is quite warm still and of course it's expanding again and that's just going to open up again so look that's the way it's designed to work I think it works pretty well if you're really worried about it because you're going to do some you're going up the cape in the middle of winter and you're going to you know, it'd be up to your snorkel, up to your windscreen in water. <laughs> Make sure your insurance is good. And you can go ahead and extend that um, transmission breather like I did if you like, or you can go and buy a kit. You can do whatever you like, guys. I just give advice on what I think is needed um, and based on experience and what we see. Now, the front diff's also got a breather and it's at a reasonable height in the front engine bay. I like those stock standard upside down cup things. Just remembering all that water would have to get through the front of the car through the radiator and maintain a level to get up to that height and that's why it's a good position behind the back of the head there on the engine because I'd suggest if it comes through your cooling system into your engine bay then it's got to get around your engine and to the it's just look it's not going to happen and if it does you're in some massive amounts of water you're in trouble anyway is the point I'm trying to make so I just don't want you to waste money 
on buying things you don't need, it can be untidy, creating work for yourself, and it can actually be worse than the OE, you know, the manufacturer setup, right? Now the lowest one is obviously the rear diff, it's got one of those little um, hat type things that close, same deal um, as the other ones, except it's directly on the diff. And that's because it's directly on the diff, it gets the dirtiest, it can get some mud and dirt and debris. That's one you really need to make sure is clean, so I suppose that's the important part of this information as well. When you're at each service, you should give, grab that and give it a twist and a wiggle and make sure it moves up and down a little bit. If you're not sure about it, you can. the best thing is probably a bit of brake cleaner or something like that. Hold the hat up on a slight angle and spray a bit of brake cleaner up there to give that a clean out and give it a play with it and blow it out with some air and this sort of thing, right? And if it's really bad, then maybe if you've got to do a lot of cleaning, maybe you've got to take it out, but I don't think so. And maybe if you did a lot of cleaning, you want to do your diff oil change. So maybe give it a really good clean at your every 40,000 K diff oil change. That way, it doesn't matter what you do to it, spraying it or not, if it goes in through into your diff oil, not that that small amount would hurt anyway, once again, but you're draining your oil afterwards, or at the same time, I'd prefer afterwards, so check it. Crack your plugs, check that, oh, that's a bit tight, mess around with that, then drop your oil out, let it all drain out and put new oil in. So, there you go, guys, that's my thoughts on it. Um, I don't run, you know, diff breather, certainly for a touring vehicle or for your general sort of river crossings and that, you're not gonna need them. If you think you're going in deep water, and you've got your snorkel and you've made sure it's all sealed up with silicon and I say it in that way because that's what people say to do and I totally disagree with it I've explained that in other videos it's not this one um, so have a search you know snorkels and uh, dusted air box and things like that on our channel and you'll get the information what I think there um, but you know if you've got it all sealed up and you think you've made a boat out of your vehicle and you've got your diff breathers and they're up really high in the engine bay or some people what they do they run them into the air box or up into the snorkel or something really cool like that you're creating yourself a lot of work you've got stuff running all over the joint and at the end of the day just remember on the prado for example and other vehicles with your fresh and recirculate air system Okay, the air comes in the front above the back of the bonnet. So just here, where you're looking in the picture, see the bonnet between the dashboard, just in front of the windscreen. There's a plastic, that's where the air, you'll see those little lines on most cars. Down below there is where the fresh air comes in. So that's where fresh water can come in as well. Once the, once the water goes over the bonnet, depends on the quantity of water. If there's a small amount, it can slowly drain through those holes into the next cavity and there is allowance there for an amount of water to get in there and then drain off again without overflowing into your fresh air inside the car climate control intake system if you know what I mean but if you get enough in there you will flood that and you'll have water blowing out in your face not air kind of exaggerated but you know what I mean it could be dripping down your vents down your dashboard and hey it'll give your whole climate control system a good wash out that's for sure you want to make sure you're in some in the high country or something some nice clean rivers not in a dirty bog hole um, but look that's one place it can come in if you hit it hard enough I'd suggest it's not really that deep that it would get up there it's more because as I said about the depth if you're in that depth of water you're in trouble right for a number of reasons um, don't do it if you hit it hard enough your bow wave is what is making it look deeper than it is which is why no you're not capable of going through that depth of water it'll look good in a photo and you'll be able to say oh it was up to here it was up to there with a bow wave if you look further down the side of the car and the back of the car that'll give you the true depth of what the water was you can take a marker off the side of the vehicle halfway along you know near the back to the front to rear door join if you like and um, that's around about what the depth is um, the other way it can come in where this fresh air comes in it's got to go out somewhere otherwise the fans working you know I mean it's good it's pressurizing the cabin but if there wasn't a way for it to go out um, things wouldn't flow okay it's a bit like what I don't like I don't like evaporative cooling okay might be good in some countries and some states and territories or whatever it's like a fan and it's a system where the water you know evaporative and look but 
basically the point is the air comes in somewhere it needs to go out somewhere else you know so normally you'd open your um, doors or windows on the side of the house opposite to where the uh, winds come in so the hot air doesn't just blow straight in depending again where you live how it all works but of course we prefer proper refrigerated air conditioning like the car with a split system so that's what we use and recommend there you go we can go into information sharing information on all sorts of aspects believe it or not I don't just know about cars and Prados got a bit of other information too so I'll, on this video I'll ask you to comment do you want to hear other information do you want I'm not a financial advisor but do you want to have some ideas about money do you want to have some ideas about things around the uh, things I do around the home what I recommend and don't recommend doesn't mean I know everything I'm right but do you want to hear that or, or do you want to just stick to the automotive side of things so back on what we're talking about um, in behind the rear bumper bar right so it's a plastic you know on the old cars it was a piece of steel it was a bumper bar right so the car was steel and the bumper bars were steel obviously many years ago things changed and we all want it looking nice and pretty there's a Hilux over there on the left if that Ultima gets out of the way so that Hilux he's got a steel bar still um, we've got this what's this a Holden Rodeo or something Has that got a bar missing or they just don't have one I don't know I don't work on them just to the left here there's no bar on that so the point is all the bumper bars we got rid of them so your plastic trims it's kind of like we call it the bumper bar or whatever but it's really called a bar cover to be quite um, accurate it's a bar cover because underneath don't think your car's all plastic underneath the front and the rear there is some type of bumper bar and it's steel and it'll be called a reinforcement or a bar reinforcement or something like that and the front and rear bars are called bar covers. So under that rear bar cover, the reinforcement may be in the center, you know, the front and the rear of the vehicle. But as you go around the corner at the back, on a lot of vehicles, most passenger vehicles, including the Prados, um, that's where the air comes out. Okay. So there's quite a big, uh, quite a big vent there that has kind of got some flaps there that I can tell you stops nothing from coming in. It doesn't stop dust. It doesn't stop water. Um, if you've got your fan on high on fresh that means fresh air is coming in and you're going to blow as much air out of there it's not going to work too well for water so what happens with the Protos is of course your engine bay is not as buoyant as the rest of the car the front goes down nose first because of the engine bay it's, it's got no buoyancy buoyancy means float you know what I mean it doesn't float um, the rear of the vehicle you've got a floor pan it's just like a boat if you've ever dealt with a boat launching boats at boat ramps and stuff it doesn't take much water for the boat to float depending how big the boat is and how deep the V is and this sort of thing a boat could be floating in a few inches of water through to taking no more than six eight twelve inches of water for a lot of boats I'm talking about the motor the boat itself not usually more than 12 inches of water for a boat that you'll generally be able to tow on a trailer so um, with that in mind don't treat your vehicle like a boat okay it's not a boat um, the back will float but eventually what will happen is the first thing that will happen generally is water will come in your doors okay because there's little drain holes at the bottom of the doors it'll come in there and they'll fill up pretty quick quicker than you think quicker than you can imagine that that water goes backwards in through those doors okay so then what happens so your doors are filling up then it overflows out your door trim from behind your door trim it overflows and out onto your floor and it starts filling up down your feet first all the water runs forward because the nose is down remember and it'll pretty much stay that way remembering your computer right all your important electricals are at the left side down near the floor level at your passenger's feet so as it starts to fill up there you're increasing the risk of uh, doing permanent damage and you're going to have some fun cleaning out your carpet anyway, even if it's wet. If you're on a trip, what do you want to strip your car out? I mean, if it's a day trip, you do something silly. You can take it home, strip it out, throw your fence, uh, carpet over the fence and give it a pressure wash and hang it out to dry. But if you're on a trip and you're away for weeks, so the last thing you want is wet carpet. So just, you know, if you're up the Cape or something, just have a think about it before you do some of those crossings at certain times of the year. Um, so yeah and then all the water it fills up at the front and it, cause, and it gets down to a level pretty quickly that all that water is running in those back vents and it just runs straight down to the front of the car butter bing heard about it seen it butter binged it i haven't actually had i'll tell you the worst i've had we were up the cape 
and we went through one of the last route crossings, can't remember what it's called at the moment, after Nolan's headed north, someone can put a reply up there which one it is. Um, it's quite a long one, there's a few different options the way to go through there, but of course everyone did the chicken thing and uh, yeah, whatever, alright then, so of course we went through like everyone else, but you're probably only in the water for about, it's quite a long crossing, it's quite deep, it's probably as deep as you can go with a bit of luck and not get bogged, okay? Um, bit of momentum for that one in case there was a few holes in the ground because the way the momentum works is you create a kind of like air really you create a load of low pressure behind you a bow wave in front so then when things go wrong and the water catches you it pushes you along and gets you going again you don't need to or want to do that all the time but there's a time and a place for it, it comes with experience so what happened was I reckon we're in that water I wouldn't have thought we we're in there for more than 10 seconds maybe it's longer than that but we came out of the other side, opened the driver's and passenger's door, and we had water running out those holes in the front doors for, I reckon, a minute or two at least. The doors are not that big. We must have been close to overflowing water into the interior of the vehicle. So we didn't get a drop in in any way, but it must have been close is my point. So you just want to be careful. Like I said, we've heard about it from people before. So there's your long story with all your information as usual. Um, diff breathers. Look, you, can, you know, it, it doesn't bother me. You can have diff breathe. Oh, I've done it too late. Well, you know, there's no problem. It's not rules. It's not, you know, you got to do what I say. It's just, there's what I think. I hope there's some common sense backing it up. There's some experience backing it up as well. Um, my vehicles, the 120, it's got the, the auto transmission extended up near the back of the EJR valve, which I've never, I don't think any water's been anywhere near it ever. I don't think it's necessary, even though I did it. And on our other Prados, they're stock standard and they'll go through any touring trips, high country river crossings and anything, anything else will. And I've never seen water in those diffs, so I don't plan to, like all the other ones we work on. Alright guys, we'll call it a day at that. I hope that's been informative. If you got something out of it, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, be looking in those comments as I mentioned earlier. And yeah, subscribe if you haven't already and turn that bell on. Bada bing, bada boom, catch up.